A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens Retold by Stephen Colborne Chapter 1 To Dover It was the year 1775. A coach was going from London to Dover. The road was wet and muddy. The horses pulled the heavy coach slowly. A man on a horse came along the road behind the coach. He was riding quickly. Stop! shouted the rider. What do you want? asked the coach driver. I have a message! shouted the rider. He stopped his horse in front of the coach. The coach also stopped. The message is for Mr Jarvis Lorry, said the rider. A man looked out of the window of the coach. He was about sixty years old and he wore old-fashioned clothes. He saw the rider and asked, What news do you bring, Jerry? Do you know this man, sir? asked the coach driver. There are robbers on this road. I know him, replied the old man. His name is Jerry Cruncher. He has come from my bank. Jerry Cruncher is a messenger, not a robber. Here is a letter for you, Mr Lorry, the messenger said. Mr Telson wants you to wait at the Royal George Inn at Dover. A young lady will travel to Paris with you. Thank you, Jerry, Mr Lorry said. He took the letter. I will wait in Dover. Good night. At the top of the letter were the words Telson's Bank, Temple Bar, London. The date on the letter was the 18th of November, 1775. To Mr Jarvis Lorry, the letter said. We have news from Telson's Bank in Paris. Dr Manette is alive. He is living at the wine shop of Monsieur and Madame Defarge in Saint-Antoine, Paris. Dr Manette is ill. He was in prison for 18 years. Lucy Manette, Dr Manette's daughter, will meet you in Dover. Go to the Royal George Inn in Dover. Wait for Lucy Manette there. Lucy has never met her father. Take Lucy to Paris with you. Then bring Dr Manette and Lucy back to London. The name at the bottom of the letter was Telson. Mr Lorry waited at the Royal George Inn at Dover. Miss Lucy Manette arrived the next day. She was about 18 years old and she had long golden hair. Miss Manette, said Mr Lorry, I work for Telson's Bank. There is a Telson's Bank in London and a Telson's Bank in Paris. I often travel between the two cities. Twenty years ago, your father came to Telson's Bank in Paris, said Mr Lorry. He left some money in the bank. Yes, said Lucy Manette. My father went to prison and he died. My mother told me about Telson's Bank. My mother brought me to England. I was very young. I have lived in England all my life. But my mother taught me French. My mother died a few years ago, Lucy said, and Telson's bank took care of me. Your father went to prison, Mr Lorry said, but he did not go to court. There was no trial. That is right, said Lucy. My father died in prison. No, my dear, said Mr Lorry. I have news of your father. He did not die in prison. 
He is alive, and he is living in Paris. I will take you to him. Lucy Manette put her hand to her face. Miss Pross, she said loudly. Then she fainted. She fell into Mr. Lorry's arms. A large woman with red hair ran into the room. I will take care of her, she shouted. I am Miss Pross, Miss Manette's companion. Mr. Lorry, Lucy Manette and Miss Pross went by ship from Dover to Calais. Then they went by coach to Paris. They found the Defarges wine shop in Saint Antoine. A wooden barrel of wine had broken in the street outside the wine shop. People were lying on the ground. They were drinking the wine. Their hands and faces were red. Monsieur Defarge, the owner of the wine shop, was standing outside the shop. He was watching the people in the street. Monsieur Defarge, Mr. Lorry said. My name is Jarvis Lorry. This is Miss Manette. Where is Dr. Manette? We're going to take him to England. He is ill, said Monsieur Defarge. My wife is taking care of him. Many years ago, I was Dr. Manette's servant. He helped us then, but he went to prison. Now we are helping him. Come in. Come and see him. Mr. Lorry, Lucy, Miss Pross and Monsieur Defarge went into the wine shop. Madame Defarge was sitting in the shop. She was knitting with wool. Her face was hard and unkind. This is Mr. Lorry, said Monsieur Defarge. He wants to see Dr. Manette. Dr. Manette will not know you, said Madame Defarge. He was in prison for eighteen years. He remembers nothing. Madame Defarge looked at Lucy. Are you his daughter? she asked. Yes, said Lucy. I am Lucy Manette. I want to see my father. Come with me, said Madame Defarge. Madame Defarge took Mr. Lorry and Lucy upstairs to a small room. An old man was sitting in the room. His hair was white. He was making shoes. Mr. Lorry spoke to the old man. What is your name, monsieur? he asked. The old man looked round. Prisoner number 105, North Tower, he replied. He knows his number in the Bastille prison, said Madame Defarge, but he does not know his name. Mr. Lorry was a kind man. Come with us, Dr. Manette he said quietly. Your daughter is here. We will take you to England. Dr. Manette did not understand. Mr. Lorry held the old man's arm. He led him out of the room. Dr. Manette walked slowly. He held a pair of shoes in his hand. Mr. Lorry took Dr. Manette, Miss Pross and Lucy back to England. They went by ship from Calais to Dover. On the ship, Dr. Manette was weak and ill. A young man helped Lucy and Mr. Lorry. They took care of Dr. Manette. You are kind, sir, Lucy said to the young man. What is your name? My name is Charles Darnay, replied the young man. Are you French? asked Lucy. Yes, I am, Charles Darnay replied. But I live in England. I often travel between England and France. My father has been ill for a long time, said Lucy. But he will get well in England. We will meet again, 
said Dane. I will visit you in England. In England, Dr. Manette slowly got well. After many months, he started to remember things. He remembered his wife. He remembered his daughter. But he did not remember the Bastille prison. And he did not remember his journey to England. Lucy and her father lived in a small house in London. Miss Pross lived with them. She took care of the house. Mr. Lorry became a friend of the Manettes and Miss Pross. He often visited them. One day, Dr. Manette and Lucy received a letter. It was a letter from a lawyer. You must come to the Old Bailey Law Court on Monday, the letter said. You must speak at the trial of Charles Darnay. Chapter 3 the Old Bailey. Charles Darnay stood in the courtroom. He stood in front of the judge and the jury. Dr. Manette, Lucy, and Mr. Lorry sat at the back of the courtroom. A lawyer stood up. The lawyer spoke to the judge and the jury. Charles Darnay travelled many times between England and France. The lawyer said. There are some witnesses. These people saw Darnay in Dover and in Calais. One witness saw Darnay giving some papers to a Frenchman. Darnay is a spy. The first witness was Lucy Manette. Lucy went to the front of the courtroom. She answered the lawyer's questions. Did you see Charles Darnay on a ship? The lawyer asked. Yes, I did, Lucy replied. We were travelling from France to England. Mr. Darnay often travels between England and France. Did he speak about the American colonies? The lawyer asked. No, he did not. Then the lawyer asked Dr. Manette and Mr. Lorry the same questions. Dr. Manette did not remember his journey from Paris to London. Mr. Lorry had not spoken to Charles Darnay. Did you see Darnay on the ship? the lawyer asked. Yes, said Mr. Lorry. The next witness was a man with a crooked nose. His name was Barsad. Mr. Barsad, the lawyer began, do you often travel to France? Yes, sir, I do, answered Barsad. Did you see Charles Darnay at Calais? Yes, sir, I did. I saw him give some papers to a Frenchman. Another lawyer stood up. He was Charles Darnay's lawyer. His name was Striver. Mr. Barsad, what is your business in France? Mr. Striver asked. It is private business, sir, Barsad answered. Do you give letters or papers to Frenchmen sometimes? asked Mr. Striver. Yes, sir, Barsad replied. Charles Darnay also has private business in France. Why are his papers different from yours? Darnay gave papers to a spy, said Barsad angrily. Darnay met the spy at night. I heard them speak about George Washington. Washington is a revolutionary in the American colonies. You saw Darnay and the French spy at night? asked Mr. Striver. Did you see Charles Darnay clearly? Yes, sir, replied Barsad. I never forget a face. Mr. Striver's clerk was sitting next to him. Striver pointed to this man. Mr. Barsad, look at my clerk, he said. Have you seen this man before? 
everybody in the courtroom looked at Mr. Stryver's clerk. The clerk was exactly like Charles Darnay. Mr. Barsad did not answer Stryver's question. This is my clerk, Mr. Sidney Carton, said Mr. Stryver. Is he like Charles Darnay? Yes, he is, Barsad replied. Did Mr. Carton give some papers to a French spy in Calais? asked Stryver. No, sir. It was dark, said Stryver. You saw a man. The man was not Mr. Carton. And he was not Charles Darnay. Everybody looked at Sidney Carton again. He was exactly like Charles Darnay. Mr. Stryver was right. The twelve men of the jury left the courtroom. They had to make a decision. Was Darnay guilty or was he not guilty? A few hours later, the jury came back into the courtroom. The judge spoke to one of the jurymen. What is your decision? he asked. Not guilty, said the juryman. Darnay is innocent. He is not a spy. Charles Darnay was free. He stood outside the Old Bailey Law Courts. He shook hands with everybody. Dr. Manette looked at Darnay. Do I know you? Manette asked. He helped us on the ship, father, said Lucy. But you do not remember our journey to England. Charles Darnay and Sidney Carton went to an inn and drank some wine. Carton drank a lot of wine. You have drunk too much, said Darnay. Do not drink any more, Mr. Carton. I always drink too much, said Carton. I don't care about people. People don't care about me. But I want to drink some wine. And I want to think about Miss Lucy Manette. She's very beautiful. Charles Darnay and Sidney Carton looked at each other. They were different in some ways. Darnay was tall and handsome. He had smooth, dark hair, and he wore fine clothes. Carton had very pale skin and dark eyes. His hair and clothes were untidy. But the two men were like each other. Their faces were the same. Four months later, Mr. Jarvis Lorry went to Dr. Manette's house. The doctor and Lucy were not there. Mr. Lorry talked to Miss Pross. How is Dr. Manette? asked Mr. Lorry. He's well, replied Miss Pross. But sometimes he remembers the Bastille prison. Sometimes he walks round and round his room. He remembers his work in the prison. He makes shoes. Why did he go to prison? asked Lorry. Has he told you? No, said Miss Pross. But a rich and powerful man sent him to the Bastille. In France, powerful aristocrats often send men to prison. Rich men make the laws. Innocent men go to prison without a trial. Yes, said Lorry. French aristocrats send men to prison without a trial. But now Dr. Manette's friends help him, said Miss Pross. You are kind to him, Mr. Lorry, and Mr. Darnay and Mr. Carton often visit our house. I like this house, said Mr. Lorry. I do not have a family of my own. I visit this house and I am happy. Mr. Lorry, Lucy Manette and Miss Pross went by ship from Dover to Calais. Then they went by coach to Paris. They found the Defarge's wine shop in Saint-Antoine. 
A wooden barrel of wine had broken in the street outside the wine shop. People were lying on the ground. They were drinking the wine. Their hands and faces were red. Monsieur Defarge, the owner of the wine shop, was standing outside the shop. He was watching the people in the street. Monsieur Defarge, Mr. Lorry said. My name is Jarvis Lorry. This is Miss Manette. Where is Dr. Manette? We're going to take him to England. He is ill, said Monsieur Defarge. My wife is taking care of him. Many years ago, I was Dr. Manette's servant. He helped us then, but he went to prison. Now we are helping him. Come in. Come and see him. Mr. Lorry, Lucy, Miss Pross, and Monsieur Defarge went into the wine shop. Madame Defarge was sitting in the shop. She was knitting with wool. Her face was hard and unkind. This is Mr. Lorry, said Monsieur Defarge. He wants to see Dr. Manette. Dr. Manette will not know you, said Madame Defarge. He was in prison for eighteen years. He remembers nothing. Madame Defarge looked at Lucy. Are you his daughter? she asked. Yes, said Lucy. I am Lucy Manette. I want to see my father. Come with me, said Madame Defarge. Madame Defarge took Mr. Lorry and Lucy upstairs to a small room. An old man was sitting in the room. His hair was white. He was making shoes. Mr. Lorry spoke to the old man. What is your name, monsieur? he asked. The old man looked round. Prisoner number 105, North Tower he replied. He knows his number in the Bastille prison, said Madame Defarge, but he does not know his name. Mr. Lorry was a kind man. Come with us, Dr. Manette, he said quietly. Your daughter is here. We will take you to England. Dr. Manette did not understand. Mr. Lorry held the old man's arm. He led him out of the room. Dr. Manette walked slowly. He held a pair of shoes in his hand. Mr. Lorry took Dr. Manette, Miss Pross and Lucy back to England. They went by ship from Calais to Dover. On the ship, Dr. Manette was weak and ill. A young man helped Lucy and Mr. Lorry they took care of Dr. Manette. You are kind, sir, Lucy said to the young man. What is your name? My name is Charles Darnay, replied the young man. Are you French? asked Lucy. Yes, I am, Charles Darnay replied. But I live in England. I often travel between England and France. My father has been ill for a long time, said Lucy, but he will get well in England. We will meet again, said Darnay. I will visit you in England. In England, Dr. Manette slowly got well. After many months, he started to remember things. He remembered his wife. He remembered his daughter. But he did not remember the Bastille prison, and he did not remember his journey to England. Lucy and her father lived in a small house in London. Miss Pross lived with them. She took care of the house. Mr. Lorry became a friend of the Manettes and Miss Pross. He often visited them. One day, Dr. Manette and Lucy received a letter. It was a letter from a lawyer. You must come to the Old Bailey Law Court on Monday, the letter said. 
You must speak at the trial of Charles Darnay. One day in the summer, Charles Darnay visited Dr. Manette at his house in London. Sir, he said, I am a teacher and a translator. I am a Frenchman, but I live in England. Life in France is too difficult. Yes, yes, said Dr. Manette. There is only bad news from France. I have often visited your house, said Darnay. You are a kind man and a good doctor, and I am in love with your daughter. Sir, I want to marry Lucy. Dr. Manette was surprised. Does Lucy know this? he asked. No, replied Darnay. I will ask her today. Sir, will you let me marry Lucy? Yes, said Dr. Manette. Please speak to her. A few days later, Monsieur Defarge was in his wine shop in Paris. He had some news. Gaspar is dead, Defarge said to his wife. He went to the guillotine. He died today. Gaspar killed the Marquis Saint Evremond, said Madame Defarge. But the people have suffered too much. The cruel aristocrats made the old laws. Now the people must make new laws. Soon we will kill all the aristocrats. Be careful, said Monsieur Defarge quickly. Those are dangerous words. There is a stranger in Saint Antoine. He speaks French well, but he is English. He is a spy. His name is Barsad. At that moment, Barsad himself came into the shop. Good afternoon, he said. The news about Gaspar is bad. He killed the Marquis Saint Evremond, said Madame Defarge carefully, and now he is dead. Why did Gaspar kill the Marquis? asked Barsad. Gaspar was a bad man. He was executed, said Monsieur Defarge. Was the Marquis a bad man too? Was he executed too? asked Barsad. We know nothing about that, Monsieur Defarge said quickly. Barsad bought a glass of wine. There is a new Marquis Saint Evremond, he said. Yes. He is the nephew of the old Marquis, replied Madame Defarge. The nephew, Charles, he lives in England, Bassad said slowly. He looked at Madame Defarge. Does he live in England? said Madame Defarge. She did not look at Bassad. I know about you said Barsad. Dr. Manette came out of the Bastille prison. You took care of him. Is that true? Everybody knows that, said Madame Defarge. Many years ago, my husband was the doctor's servant. The doctor helped my family. Why did Dr. Manette go to prison? asked Barsad. Did saint Evremond send him to the Bastille? We do not know, monsieur, said Madame Defarge. You must not speak about this. Very well, said Barsad. But I can tell you some news. Dr. Manette's daughter, Lucy, is going to get married. She will be married in London. In England... Her husband is called Charles Darnay, but in France he has another name. He is Charles Monsieur the Marquis saint Evremond.
One sunny day in London, Charles Darnay married Lucy Manette. Mr. Jarvis Laurie and Mr. Sidney Carton came to the wedding. It was a happy day. But Sidney Carton was not very happy. He shook Charles Darnay's hand. He kissed Lucy. You are my good friends, he said. I do not have many friends. Now you are married. Please let me visit your new house sometimes. You will be welcome, said Darnay. We will always be your friends. Several years passed. Charles and Lucy Darnay had a daughter. They called the girl Lucy, like her mother. Sidney Carton and Jarvis Laurie often visited the family. One night in July 1789, Mr. Laurie visited the house. I have come from Telson's bank, said Mr. Laurie. There was a lot of work today. I have news from Paris. It is not good news. The people are fighting in the streets of Paris, said Mr. Lorry. They have opened the Bastille prison. All the prisoners are free. There is a revolution in France, Mr. Lorry said. The people want a republic. They do not want a king. The people want a new government, but they do not want the aristocrats. There are many trials and many executions in Paris, the banker said. The people watch the executions. The guillotine cuts off many heads. It cuts off the heads of the aristocrats. Each time an aristocrat dies, said Mr. Lorry, the people are happy. Death to all aristocrats! They shout, Long live the Republic! Long live the Revolution! Outside the Chateau of saint Evremond, the people were very angry. Kill all the aristocrats! Burn the Chateau! They shouted. The servant, Gabel, wanted to save the Chateau. But nobody helped him. The people lit fires. The chateau burnt to the ground. The people wanted to kill the Marquis saint Evremond, but they could not find the Marquis. The old Marquis was dead. The new Marquis never came to France. The people sent Gabel to prison. Where is the Marquis? they asked him. Only the Marquis can save you. In the next months, many French aristocrats came to London. They brought news from Paris. Charles Darnay was now the Marquis saint Evremond, But he did not tell anybody. It was a secret. One day, Charles received a letter from France. At the top of the letter were the words, Prison of the Abbey, Paris. To Monsieur Charles, the Marquis saint Evremond, the letter said. Please help me. I am in prison. I was the servant of your family. Soon I will die. Please come to Paris. Please help me. Your family servant, Théophile Gabel. <laughs> 